The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu taala anhu <coughs> reports that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says there are seven things that we should do that will reach us, benefit us after we die. Seven things after we die." Inna mimma yalhaqul mu'min min amalihi wa hasanatihi ba'da mawtihi That certainly these rewards and benefits reach a person who does certain deeds, certain actions while he's alive He benefits from these deeds after he dies And what are those deeds? Number one, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Ilman allamahu wa nasharahu." He says, "Ilm that you teach, knowledge that we teach. See, knowledge that we teach. And when we die, the people that benefit from that, we get their blessings, and it will be continuous for us after. It will continue to be a blessing for us even after we die." You know, like how here in Darululum, we teach students, imams, hufas, learn Islam. When we die, those of you who support that cause, when you die, those students who lead salah, give khutbas, propagate the deen, you get that blessings in your grave and until then, qiyamah. Then the Prophet ﷺ continues to say, he says, ilman allamahu, and then he also says, wa nasharahu. And that knowledge of the deen that you spread. So one is to teach someone and one is to spread. And if you study the Arabic meaning of this word nashara, to spread, to propagate, to spread, to propagate. So you know we have an interesting combination. Eh? Media, social media, magazines, Quran, Dawah. That's the spreading. That's what the Hadith says. Well, nasharahu. And spreading it. So when you die... So when we die, those of us who are part of spreading the Quran and the Dawah, you know, people who contribute to Al Hikmat TV, and people are sitting all over the world right now in all Dubai and Arabia and Bangladesh and Pakistan and Africa looking at Al Hikmat Khutbah right now, you get the blessings. People who contribute towards this. Because you help spread the message. Somebody changed their lives. Mm -hmm. And when we die, you don't know how many people's lives have been changed, what Quran they received. You never could tell whose life can be changed. Uh-huh. Spreading it. That's a continuation of blessings for us when we die. Then the hadith continue. Very interesting. Wawaladan salihan tarakahu. And if you leave a child, you leave behind a righteous child. Whatever good deed that child does, read Quran, teach Quran, spread the message of Islam, spend money in the part of Allah. Whatever that child does that you left that good child, then when we die, we get the blessings that that child does. He gets it and we get it. And the Prophet says it is a sign of Qiyamah when people will not respect their parents anymore. People will not do anything for their parents, living or dead. You know, the Prophet ﷺ says, the, the best person that can make a dua for a father or a mother is a child. But anybody who reads that verse and that Quran from those books about death, about parents, you get the blessing. We get the blessing. That's what the nashara means. Nashara who? Spreading the message. When a righteous child does something for their parents and make dua for them or spend, do something or do a book in the name of their parent, they get the blessings, the parents get the blessings and the person who spends it. And you heard the verse about spending in Surah Muhammad, chapter 47, verse 38. It's for us and for them. Very interesting. That's the whole reason why we're doing that. Because we want to remind people, there are people who forget about their parents and they don't ever make dua for them when they die. Oh, that's a disaster. They don't even do anything for them while they're living. Far less to do anything for them when they die. Make a dua for them. And you know if you study hadith, you could make hajj for your parents. You could do qurbani sacrifice for them. You could do umrah for them. You could do so many things. You could build a home. 
in the name of sadqa for your parents. You could give away things in charity in the name of parents. You could give away Quran in the name of your parents. You could give away so many things and do so many things. There are volumes of hadith written on this. That's what it means by waladan salihan. A child that will do good deeds. The parents will get the blessings and you. But here the flip of that. If you and I don't do that, then your children and my children will not do it for us. What you plant is what you reap. And if we do it, then our children will do it. And it will be continuous. Let me just read the other three, four points again. The next thing that continues, this is what the Prophet says, Bada mautihi, after death we continue to get these blessings. This is not my opinion. Then he says, But wa mushafan warrathahu. Allahu Akbar. This is deep. He says, and if you leave behind a Quran as a legacy, look the hadith is here. You leave a Quran or a book. That's why I'm encouraging people to do a book in the name of their parents and love and dear ones. Because the hadith is directly saying that. You leave a book pertaining to the Quran or the Quran that will be a legacy. When we die, nobody wants to know about our house and our property and our business. But the people who benefit from these books and these materials and these written things, that will be blessings for us after our death. That's what the Prophet is saying here. It's a deep hadith. Every one of these items can take volumes and hours to speak about. Allah permits us, we'll talk about it in the next khutbah, inshallah. I just want to complete the, the points. Then he says, Masjidan banahu. And if that person who builds a masjid, after his death, he gets the blessings. That's why I said the wealthy man who picked me up with a Porsche is an idiot. Because he could have built 20 masjids. Masajid, the amount of money he has. He invites me to beg poor people to help build that masjid. La hawla. You know, if I had the money, I say, Mr. Millionaire, Allah says in the Quran, you're a beggar. You are the fuqara. You are the one in need and want. I give you this to build your masjid and don't waste my time to go. But, that, you know, why do I go? I get some blessings. I don't give money because I don't have money to give. But I go and remind myself and remind the people and motivate them to spend in the path of Allah. So everybody who contributes, they get blessings. I get blessings for being a means of motivating people. So that's why I go around America, go all over when people invite me to do fundraisings, to build masjids and Islamic school. But the people who have the means and they don't do it, they will have to answer to Allah for being a miser. Then Allah says, Oh, and Baitan li ibn Sabil banahu. And so you hear about teaching, spreading the message, a righteous son, leaving the Quran or the knowledge of the Quran or the propagation of the message of the Quran, building a masjid. Here the next item. The fifth one. Baitan li ibn Sabili banahu. Or someone who builds a building or a house or a place for people. The wayfarers to, to stay. Just to have a place that someone who have no way to sleep and no way to go, that you have a place and say, you know, this is for poor people or this is for wayfarers, travelers. They come by, they have a place to sleep. That person, when he dies, that blessings will continue for him. Some of us think these things are insignificant. This is the hadith of the Prophet. Then he continues to say again, Nahran ajrahu. Or you build a stream, or you open a water fountain, or you set up something that people could benefit from the water. Then when we die, everyone who benefit from that will be a continuous blessing for us when we die. Allahu Akbar. And here what is the last thing he said amongst the seven things. He says, number seven, of the things that if we do, we'll benefit after our death. Sadaqatan. Sadaqa. Charity. Akhrajaha Charity Akhrajaha Mimalihi Fi sihatihi Allahu Akbar That's the miraculous word Wa hayatihi He says And what also benefits people When they die Is when they give charity When they are healthy Oh listen Not when they're in the hospital eh? Hear the hadith when they are healthy 
and the brain are thinking pro the brains are thinking properly and they got no diseases in their hearts then they give charity while they are alive that blessings continue for them when they die you see what happens when you go in the hospital and your body becomes sick what happens the disease in your heart heals suddenly you become charitable suddenly you become you want to give generous you want to give this you smile into everybody enemies that you didn't smile and talk to when they come to visit you you're like forgive me hug me oh i always love you you know because you're sick you're in the hospital when you were healthy the heart full of diseases you don't want to smile with people you don't want to talk to people you don't want to give nobody anything you don't want to care about anybody but when the body gets sick and we in the hospital then the disease from the heart automatically get out and then we want to give but that giving does not have the value i'm not saying you won't get blessings it does not have the value as to when you're healthy and strong and you're greedy and you're a miser and then you fight that disease and that ego and say, Shaitan, you shut up. I am going to give in the path of Allah. Not when I see death knock my door, then I decide to call the lawyer and say, hey, just write this. Give this in charity. Give this to the masjid. Give this for the student. Give it away. I'm going to die in a few days. Cancer has hit my home. Not when you get a cancer news, you get a doctor news, that you got a couple of years again to live or a couple of days again. The hadith is speaking about when you spend when you spend when you have good health and you're living with good health. Not just living, eh? And you're sick. A lot of people give. Or well, not only that, there are a lot of people who wait to die and then they give. You know how many people come to me and say, hey, shake. Oh, my father died. I want to do this. I'm like, why didn't you do it while he was living? Come on. What a, you know, this mistake keeps on happening. This disease we do all the time. We always wait for somebody to die to do a good. Why don't we do it while we are living? So somebody does not have to do it for us. That's what the hadith is saying. Spend your money. Spend your time. Give while we are living. And give when we are healthy. That's when we get that full continuous blessing. When we're sick and we're ready to die, we have no other choice because we cannot use it anymore. No selfishness, no ego, no nafs. You have no choice but to give it. So it will not carry the blessings. It will not carry the blessings that we are supposed to get. And you know, I see that all the time also. Eh? I also see for Juma and in many masjids, the older people come first and the healthier people come last. Don't wait to get old to go to masjid. Do your duty, pray your salah, give your wealth, give in the health. Do whatever you could do when you're healthy, you're strong, and you're wealthy. You get more blessings in the path of Allah, and it benefits us in the akhirah, inshallah. We don't have the time, we'll continue on our time, inshallah. Ya Allah, ya Rahim.